Welcome to our Let's Talk series. It's more than just an event. It's where young adults like us come together to share stories, spark connections, and encourage growth. In collaboration with Creating a Village, The Art of Everything, and the Georgia Black Expo, we're all about real talks, genuine laughs, and building our community, one conversation at a time. So pull up a chair, join in, and get ready for some real heart-to-heart -heart conversations. What are you waiting for? Let's talk. You're good. Yeah. Ugh. Everyone's on CP Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, oh, we don't know <laughs> more. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Everyone, oh, but I love. Well, <laughs> we're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> you got here first. That's what that. Right, right on. Right on. No, I wasn't any brothers out there. I'm praying for the CP time. Yes. I'm like, hopefully, I'm not the only black person. No, no. you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. What's the opposite of CP talk? Regular. Pacific. Yeah. One time. Pacific. <laughs> oh my god. Central. Uh, what's, what is CP is actually like a time, right? Like it's no, it's time. color people. No, oh, it's Central. Central. It's wow. like Central Pacific. Central Standard Time. CST. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, can we all go around and introduce? kind of talk about what type of content you're interested in, um, if you're currently doing some type of content. Um, and maybe like a fun fact. Hi, I'm Jada Milligan. I currently have a podcast called Creating the Village and that's my extensive content right now. But I do want to get into, I, I produce my podcast, but I want to get into more production of um, like game show, TV show type things. Mm -hmm. um, and a fun fact about me, I'm tall. Thompson, and uh, I am interested in acting and filmmaking, as well as music. Um, so, the stuff that I'm working on currently, well, um, I was on strike, so, mm. you know, I wasn't doing anything recently, but I had a film come out recently called Senior Year. And uh, oh, yeah, it was on Netflix. Yeah, so um, that's gonna it's on Apple TV. Um, so excited about that. And then the fun fact about me is uh, I would say fun fact is I enjoy um, playing uh, violin. I used to play it when I was younger, and then I got back into it later because I, I wanted to get back into it. So I just now get started with that. So yeah, it's been pretty fun. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We were talking about getting back into it. Um, the last one. Um, I don't think I mentioned it last time, but maybe I have. Okay. Way before this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm Aaron. Meet anyone, just be like, this is mad, this is mad, mad, but don't say Aaron because I want my street name to be mad, mad, right? Mad, mad, or just or mad. mad, just mad. Can we have the yeah, background behind? I don't want to call you mad, you so bad. Yeah, you can call me mad. You said what? Can we have the background behind mad, mad? Yeah, okay, so the background behind mad, mad. Just a little math, you know, my middle name is Madison, so I took the first three from that, and then my last name is Mason, so I took the first three from that, so I'm like Mad Mads. Oh, okay. For the people that I don't know. Okay. And then also, I'm in love with M's for some reason, because my my abbreviation for my name is M&M, but E-M-D-M, but yeah, M&M. 
yeah. in. So it was kind of like Eminem, Madness, yeah. you know. Watch the brothers. Um, and the type of content that I'm trying to get into or currently involved in is short films um, for both. I want to get more into the short films and just creating like a storyline. And I like the process of something from paper to like real life and then um, act it out and then not even real life, but like embodied by people too. It's, just, it's beautiful uh, seeing ex things executed in that way. Cause it's literally like, I feel like that's the most raw version of executing something. It's like this came from paper and then now you see people acting this out. Like, wow. And they're doing great or they're doing awful. Like whatever, it's just like execution of that's like beautiful. Um, so I wanted, I actually enjoy that as like a form of art for me, like making short films, but behind camera, um, that's been cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's the type of content currently. Um, oh, and then, you know, podcasts, you know, that's coming soon. <laughs> I'm just like, it might took a host. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm gonna start over. <laughs> hey again, y'all. It's Big T, I'm just saying, you call me Taylor, but, um, <laughs> As far as content that I like to, was that the first question? Content you like, you want to make, or that yeah, you like to make? Well, I'm getting into content, big hot podcast coming soon, you know, so look out for that. But outside of that, um, if I had to, I'd love to do some more content, probably incorporated in my life and music. I play guitar, and I play violin for seven years, but I don't really play it often now because my bridge had broke, but you know, oh, yeah, I know that's what I'm moving. Ah, yeah, but um, yeah, that's about it. Nice. I do. I like the jack of all trades. I have a billion and one hobbies that I start every five minutes. So I would honestly just do content on like lifestyle. I'm always finding something new to do. That's what's up. Yeah, yes. That's the hardest part about it. Yeah. So. I'm always doing something. That's good. That's what's up. Yeah. Oh, I just can't choose a foodie. Yeah, like yes. foodie. You want to try to eat? If you guys, <laughs> you know, if you guys ever need a place or suggestion, that's the thing. That's the thing. Well, like, what part of the world? I got yeah. y'all for real. Yeah, yeah, literally. Okay, well, I'm Skylar. I'm not really a content creator, but I really like to hang out with them. Um, <laughs> She's a YouTube fan. <laughs> Um, what's that? What's that? I don't know. Just like her, I'm a jack of all trades. I like to do different stuff. I like to make candles. Um, I like building Legos. Period. No. <laughs> I'm here for it. That's what yeah. I'm And I am a foodie also. So we can combine lists. Yeah, okay. okay. So Ooh. what I'm hearing is we need a list to have in the group chat because I know your story is great, but sometimes you don't be put in the place there. And I've seen the food, and I'm like, where is the place? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. me and Jada. You gotta Jada, ask. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask. <laughs> You're like, what place is this? Where's this from? She was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying to find it now. Three hours later. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Yeah, I, I used to have a friend that did that, uh -huh. and every time we go out, we would always spend 50 plus on restaurants, and I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm really going to cut you off so we can this can happen. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just stop by Zaxby's, and I'm like, nah, I don't need that. But, <laughs> yeah, <it's wild. laughs> so, uh, we want down. Down I'm down for it, as long as I know ahead of time. With the like money the yeah. yeah, it's like, don't let me show up and you're like, content. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, $74 check. Yeah. 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 Yo, he's out. He's like, yeah. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> that really happened. Like, two of our friends left and was like, no, nah, we're going to go to the McDonald's when we're here. And they left us at the restaurant. We're like, all right. After eating the Zulu, though? Or no, nah, they didn't order. Oh, okay. Okay. I was they didn't do us that dirty. Horrible. They didn't do us that dirty. I wouldn't call them my friends, my 
find out if they did that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That is true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Okay, so um, it's nice meeting everyone. I'm glad everyone also had a chance to introduce themselves. I will introduce what the vibe is for the event. Um, I guess I'll stand. I guess I'll kind of like just lean right here. So anyways, um, yeah, so we have a few familiar faces and a few new spaces. Um, we have a Let's Talk social experiment event happen bi-weekly. So every other Sunday we get together and we talk about seven different pillar topics. So as you see, there is some from our last event where we talked about political, civic engagement, arts and entertainment, health and wellness, education and learning, business and commerce, wealth and finance, and technology and innovation, which kind of covers a whole, like, if not any, but like, well, not, not any. It covers most topics for all conversations with those broad pillars. And so this one's going to be a little bit different because um, we already have base questions already on there. And you also have the privilege and opportunity to write a question you might not see on there that you want to talk about already. I'm going to put the timer on. Um, like I said, grab one of these with Ken um, and look around, see if there's something that you want to have a conversation about that you see on there. If not, create one because we're creatives. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm going to put the timer on in eight minutes. And what are we supposed to be doing when we look at the sticky notes? If you like want to talk about like you're like, oh that's interesting. I would love to hear everyone's take on it or like you're curious about it, just you know, take it with you. Yeah. Bring it back to you. Okay. And then if you want to add something to that like uh what is a pillar. Yeah, add something to a pillar, then you can write one down. Yeah, for future um conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay, so one to twenty guess for seven. Sixteen. Oh, we keep guessing you with number. You get one guess. Oh, okay. I thought it was like who was gonna be closest. Did you say that number? No, I didn't. Say a number. I'm thinking. Did that everyone else say a number? My number. Yeah. One to twenty, oh, guess a number. Oh god. Don't take it seven. Twenty one. Somebody said three? No, it's a three. Which number did you go with? Because I said 4 and 16. And <laughs> How do you guys feel about this? 4 and 16? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, if she were to win, that would Okay, 7-1, because it was 18. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Best. Okay. The best number. <laughs> 7, you got it. Alright. I'm gonna go first. Well, okay, yeah, so this is from Arts and Entertainment, mm -hmm. and it's about your bucket list. Okay. So, I think it's interesting because everybody has like things that they wanna do or they might see, whether it's on TV, online, or just hearing about it. And I'm sure everyone's list is gonna be kind of different. Yeah. Um, do you guys feel like bucket lists are mandatory, like, like mandatory or highly recommended? No, I don't have. I've never. Well, I feel like you should, to some extent, think about like your goals because of thank you. Because that is something I seem to refuse to do, like in life, that I want to start doing now. Because I really just be like, oh, I want to do this thing, but I don't sit down and say, okay, this is the goal. And then these are, you know, these are smart goals. These are the steps I should take to do this. I just start doing it. And I'm like, I'm going to end up doing it. Mm -hmm. But there's no real plan in place. So I do think that's something you should try to have. But I don't think it's necessary, honestly, because I just be doing stuff. And it happens. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like. Me personally, the way I look at a bucket list, I look at it different than like my life goals in a way. Mm -hmm. So a bucket list to me is kind of like something that's like, you know, that, that looks so fun. I, I'm going to do that one day. Like, like when I say like the jet ski. If, if I get to the point where I'm on my deathbed and I never went jet skiing, yeah. it's going to be like, I wish I went just whatever, <laughs> you know, cool. If I never, if I go my whole 
if I retire from being an actor and I never get to do a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, or if I keep acting and he retires and I never get to do a movie with him, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Like, yeah. oh well, like that would have been cool for me to do. So that's kind of how I look at it. Like, yeah. if I never went to Child Perry Studios and I just never worked with him before, but I still was able to do my own thing. I would have been fine with that too. It's just kind of like, wow, this is something I kind of wanted to do. I really want to do it. And I actually did it. Like, this is cool. Or, hey, like, we're, we're in Peru and they got jet skis right there. Let me spend this bread and do whatever I got to do. Like, because yeah. I always wanted to do this. So I don't think you have to have it. You really don't. But I just think that it's natural for you just to want to do certain things. Like, you just think it looks cool or fun or it's interesting. You don't have to know the guitar, but you just think it's, I mean, I'm not going to go in your mind what you think, <laughs> but usually like something like that. It just makes the plot like, better. Yeah, like I did that, you know? I like, did it for the plot. Like, yeah. it adds to my character development skills. Like, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Like, some, to some degree, like, it's like, it would be cool to do it, but how I, like, I feel that way, but I also feel like I need to do these things. Like they're new goals, but in a different category. It's not like my goal, like if I'm playing a short film, like the goal is to finish this in this date or time frame. But more so like, you know, I have like ten years ahead of me, you know, like God willing, right? Yeah. And within these ten years, this is definitely doable. Yeah. You know, and I want to do these things, so what's stopping me from doing it? Especially if I'm like giving it like I'm not like you know, like for example, like um if I wanted to film with Angelina Jolie. Like in 10 years, that would be highly possible with yeah. me learning how to act, then being in the right spaces, then yeah. getting some short films and some movies in, and yeah. then like maybe year eight, I like finally meet her and she's like, oh, I'm working on this project, let's do a film together, right? Yeah. And like, that's how I think about it a little bit. So it's like, it's like a, like creative goals. Yeah. Like, and, but, and the thing is, it's like if I was on my deathbed and I'm like, Dang, I never learned ASL. Like, I wouldn't be like, I regret it, but <laughs> I regret this one decision. Yeah. You know, but I would definitely be like, what did I do with my time? That was more important than like achieving what I said I wanted to do. You know, and then it would probably just make me look at it differently. Mm -hmm. So it, it does, it does kind of like make me look at how I use my time based and how the things that I'm currently doing can either benefit or take away from like me stepping in that direction of completing what's on the bucket list. Yeah. Like that's kind of how I look at a bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm like, I have a question. What's your name again? Diallo. Diallo? Yeah. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just making sure. I have felt like my point of it was kind of similar to his in the sense where like, you add it to your bucket list, but it's kind of vague. Like, oh yeah, I would love to go skydiving one day, but it's nothing that's really close to your heart. It's just kind of like something cool that you've mm -hmm. seen and you think it's very cool. Yeah. Which kind of prompted me to have like a follow-up question uh, connected to the bucket list, which is, do you guys feel like bucket list and vision boards kind of go hand in hand? Or do you think no. vision boards are more personal? Kind of what we're talking about. Because when you're talking about bucket lists, the way that you described it, it reminded me of my vision board. Oh, yeah, really? this is how this is exactly what I want to do. I got all this time on my hands in the next 10 years or the next year. This is how I would want my time to look with the things and goals I have in place. But my bucket list is kind of like, oh, well, yeah, I'd love to be with John Boyega, the actor, someday. Like, yeah. and that would be great, but it's not something really like personal, like a real personal, heartfelt goal. If that makes mm. sense. No, you said that that is actually kind of how I see bucket lists like mm -hmm. in my vision board. No, I don't see it as a vision board. Mm -hmm. I see it as like, oh yeah, this is really cool, mm -hmm. and I would love to do it one day, and if I get the opportunity, then I'll probably take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. But it's not something like, you can actively pursue it, but it's not on the top of your mind to like actively be like right. setting stone steps ahead of yourself to get there. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of like similar, like for example, if, if my bucket list is that Travis Scott pulls me on stage to sing a song yeah. with him. That might not never happen, but, <laughs> yeah, but if like, it did happen, I'd be like, man, I really did that this thing. Is yeah, like, this is yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. That thing that I wanted to do, I did that thing. Mm -hmm. rather, rather than like a vision or like a life goal or like mm -hmm. how I see my future, the person I'm going to be, yeah. 
things I'm gonna accomplish. You know, me jack skiing is not an accomplishment. You know, it's just a cool thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So yeah. So I have nothing on my bike. I don't know, I get, I get personal with like, with the bucket list. I actually enjoy my bucket list more than a vision board. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just like, like a bucket list, a list is something you can check off. A vision board is just like a collage to me of things that I think, well not I think, but a vision board is like a collage of images or collage of like a vision I have yeah. and like this is how it pieces together but a bucket list is like yeah like if you know like I can use a bucket list to walk me through this vision board like that's how I kind of like look at it. Yeah. I feel that like in order for me to be this person I gotta do this, 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 I need to do yeah. da, da, da. like okay cool I took the class, I completed it, Yeah. like I, I actually did that or cool I did my podcast for yeah, like, like, like for yeah. instance, like how to sew, right? Like whoever wrote how to sew on there, that's on their budget list, right? Yeah. So on my vision board, New York Fashion Week, if I learned how to sew and I went with one of the pieces I sewed at New York Fashion Week on my vision board, I just wonder what kind of opportunities would like be developed from that. Like that's how I look at it. Could you consider a vision board being a more... I was gonna say like a physical, a physical bucket list, but like kind of like putting your big bucket list yeah. kind of like in a picture form. So you just kind of a little bit. Or do you think it's still a little different? It's different because for like okay, they tie in together for mm -hmm. sure. They overlap. They they have a similar, they have similar foundational points mm -hmm. with like okay, like what do you want? What do you want to see for yourself? And then like what do you want for yourself? Right? Mm -hmm. Like that's they have similar foundational points, but. The difference for me is a vision board can it's like it can be broad and like kind of like okay you know like this is my vision board for 2024 you know i want to have a driveway and i want to you know get married or i want to like have um be on top of hair care and this and that right like it could be very broad but a bucket list is like i want to like grow my hair in 24 or like it's more specific but at the same time a vision board can be more specific mm -hmm. but like how like how would you do that like in a collage format like so i think i think you don't need one versus the other mm -hmm. both could be like great individually right. but i think one aids the other more than like a vision board might be able to then help you kind of find what you want on your bucket list yeah. or your bucket list will kind of help you envision like yeah, this is they, they, they can. They can. They, 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 they can. can. And I, I know I keep like referencing it because it's how I like be seeing the world or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like in a literal sense, right? And I'm sure you know because you get some short films. Like for they have vision boards for films. Yes. And the vision board is like this is kind of like how the main character might kind of look, and this is the color yeah. palette mm -hmm. of the film. This is the kind of music that's gonna be playing. You know, it's just like a vision of what the vibe of it is gonna be, yeah. but that's different from like a, a shot. shot list. Like a shot list is like we're a doing this. Like we gotta get this shot. 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 Yeah. And this is the order we gotta get it in, and we have to do it by this amount of time. Exactly. And it's like yeah. you're really getting a, something done for real, for real, yeah. specific. Did I say bucket list is it's more great. urgent? A bucket list is like necessities, like tools to get the vision to life. Like that's how I feel about a bucket list. Like if you like, like you can go without a bucket list because some people really just want to go with the flow of things and that's how they feel. And then there's also like a movie where it's just like when you're 70, like create that bucket list because you're about to kick the bucket, right? Like the term, like where the bucket came from. So like, so sometimes it's not as urgent until you realize how old you are and then you're like, dang, time flew by. How much time do I have and what can, you know, if I die tomorrow, what can I do today? Mm -hmm. So let me create a bucket list. Like, so it really depends on the urgency, but he made a great, like, he made a great comparison between, mm -hmm. you know, having a storyboard and like, this is how the story looks, you know, this is, this is the script, you know, the characters, da 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 da, the, the short film's about this, and then having a shot list that you need three medium close-ups for this one shot. 
and with this type of lighting, and this is the actor that needs to be on it. Like, it just kind of, it just kind of, it has more detail. Like, yeah, I want this vision of me being a millionaire on my vision board, mm -hmm. but like, I feel like by me learning the guitar or me learning golfing will have me surrounded by those millionaires to get me to being a millionaire sooner yeah. than just saying I want to be a millionaire. So like, your, your opinion, a vision board is actually more idealistic, where the bucket list is actually more like real. Yeah, bucket list to me is more real. It's more obtainable. Like you just you can all, you can look at something and envision something all day and night, but if you don't have the tools on how to get to that vision, it's like what was the point? It just looks cute on your wall. I think that I just would okay. rather name. I get what you're saying. I just wish they had a different name for that list than bucket list. Than bucket list but I still look at it. It's just like what little things you that what? you think. I think it's cool. Cool. I guess I everyone's say, could be different. Yeah. Like for example, yeah. yeah, well, with my vision boards, mine are more specific. If I was to make one for this year, you would see a French flag on it. You would see a picture of Duolingo. <laughs> you would see. Um, like a picture of a place I could go practice. Like mine are pretty like specific, short term, small goals. But I do yeah. know people who make vision boards that are like, this is the house I want to be in. Mm -hmm. These are the type of clothes I'm gonna be wearing. These are the type of kids I'm gonna have. Like everything yeah. is like real, almost like they're putting their this. imagination or like the, what they would want their dreams and hopes on a vision yeah. board. When it could be used for different things, same with the bucket list. Because I think how the conversation started, me and him were like, well, this kind of like hypothetical things that you would like to happen. It may happen I or may not, I but it doesn't it. have to be that way. It yeah. can be, like you said, very yeah. detailed and more current instead of just like, oh, yeah. Why right. right. all you guys hypothetical <laughs> statements <laughs> are realistic? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the thing. Like, that's how I believe. I believe in a bucket list. Like, yeah. Like all you guys hypothetical statements. Yeah. No, that can be reality. How can we make that? Like that's how I feel about it. Like I get very passionate about. Like a vision board is like that's a great vision. Like I don't no, see how you feel about your bucket list. Yeah. I am about my vision board. It's like yeah. If you're on that board, it's about to happen. Like yeah. true. it ain't like oh I'm gonna get the G wagon and a couple of dollars. I'm gonna get the Toyota oh, Camry. Yeah. It's gonna be real. Yeah. <laughs> but I see what you say. I think like. That's as she was trying to say at one point, like it's kind of subjective. Like, it is subjective. Everybody clearly it is, and I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Until now, but yeah, that's crazy. That was cool. <laughs> 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 you know, I was going. There's so many different insights. I wasn't even thinking of. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, how do you feel? about those like little I'm things? Everyone. Yeah. 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 I do feel like the bucket list is a stepping stone. Like, okay, if I do this, then I'm gonna get here. Mm -hmm. So long term vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm subjective. Okay, so Jada was next. You were you were six. You said six. Oh. Okay. My question came from education and learning. Okay. And it is is college still worth the investment with the internet? Slash student loans slash Joe Biden. Mm. <laughs> um, okay. And that's actually a question that I've been like thinking about that it crosses my mind occasionally, like when listening to podcasts or just learning stuff on YouTube. Especially like Howard is like forty six thousand dollars, <laughs> and so just thinking. And also, most recently, I was having a conversation with Miss Ingrid, and so I went to a school for computer information systems. Okay. And in that, you learn about like the ideation process, like just things that you need to know about like your end users and like how to build up a business or an application or whatever it is you're going to build, like the steps that go into it. And we were having a conversation and she's like, yeah, so you just would do this and do this. I was like, this is literally the ideation process. Like you come with the concepts, you, you beta test it, you validate all this stuff. And I'm like, I went to school for this. Yeah. And in school you learn it, but sometimes if you don't have like an actual place to apply it, it's like, okay, I have this knowledge, but it's easily kind of forgettable. Like it's in the back of your mind, but if you don't have something to like really apply to that you're interested in, I guess, then it's like, okay. 
Now, I do think college is valuable for like, I think the main, one of the main reasons to go to college is like networking. I do okay. think like going, being in a similar space for four years with other individuals like peers, I think that's a very great place to grow as an individual, especially like depending on where you came from. Like, because um, I know I was like really sheltered growing up. I, I went to school, I did like my little clubs, little sports, and then I went home. And so I didn't like, I don't want to go out that often. And, but at college, it's just like, oh, I can walk to the store, I can go to the museum with my friends, like I can do all these different things. And it caused me to grow like as an individual. So I'm not sure how that process would be, not going to college. Cause I know like you're capable of doing that, but I'm saying like for someone who might be sheltered, like what is that breakthrough point for them? But yeah, I just think that's really interesting. I'm, I'm on the up and downs of like, is college still worth investing? And a lot of times you don't even know what you go to school for. You just go because people want you to go. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lie. Can you take your just what's up? I'll take your question. Last time, so I'll just try to hear I know. I'm like, oh, I've been doing a lot of <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, it is. Um, personally, I feel like college is still an investment yeah. that people should take part in. Not everyone. Yeah. Um, I will say, if you're going to take part in college, like, what are you studying, right? Some people go in and obviously they don't know exactly what they want to study. Mm -hmm. And possibly that could have been an investment still going and figuring it out along the way because now you're exposed to the different possibilities and careers. Now you're exposed to different people's interests and seeing which do you fit in most, like which one do you relate to most or which one do you want to do, right? So that that could potentially be an investment. Um, Some people can, it really depends on your mindset, right? That's why it's not for everyone. Because if you go in and you're like, I wasted all this money, which you all, you know, I obviously felt like that at one point. Like, I feel like you'll always have that college, like, talk in your head, which is like, I don't need to be here. You know, I can, I can quit and get a job without a degree. I see people doing it all the time. Like, you'll always kind of have that in your head at some points when, it, when you feel like it's getting hard. But for the people that are like, oh, you know, I really could have, like, learned this online and they pass, they're passionate about it and they stop going and they're like, you know, those are people that might not see it as an investment, right? Oh. And so it depends on, you know, like that, you know, like how do you, how are you thinking about your life? Mm-hmm. Obviously, I do agree with how it adds like character development to a person or personal development on how you interact with people or how you coordinate your schedule. I feel like college is great for structure. Mm-hmm. I personally love the structure of college because it keeps you on that hourly schedule on like you know I have a class at this time I have a class at that time I have a break so I can go to the library then I can go back to my class that starts here and then afterwards I'm going to go to the gym and then afterwards I'm going to do this and then my friends will hang out after or I might skip class hang out with my friends you know go smoke or something and then come back and then go take this quiz like it, it helps you kind of like figure out that flow of like what you're currently doing what you're you know like where you're at um when I say like it's a major investment is if it's something you need to be in college for, like the yeah. med, like health and wellness, mm-hmm. right? You need you need college for that. Um, so yeah, like yeah. you need yes, yeah, STEM. You need college for that. Like so, yes, you can learn tech things, you know, online and be fine and like learn about computers and programming and this that, and the third without college, but you'll never. Have that experience of like I can email my professor and ask someone you, like yeah I can make a comment on YouTube how do you do this and then wait for the interactions mm-hmm. and the comments and be like oh this is a great comment they answer that question now I have to look up another video but having the resources is what's made as a STEM major yeah. is what makes it an investment because you don't have to wait for the right question to pop up in your head to find the right video online you know, like you, you kind of already like can just brainstorm it out with your peers or your professors or your counselor. And, and that's why I say it's an investment, but it's not an investment for everyone because everyone thinks about their flow different. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel about it. No, yeah. okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I want to say 
I do think like college, I think college's investment is the people. Like having they are the resources. Because even after you graduate, like you have access to those people forever. Like just yes. like, oh I went to Howard, oh I went to Clark, oh I went to Emory, like Emory's around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um like yeah, there's just like so many people and connections that you can get because of that. And also like you're saying, like having that that inside of I can ask this question to this person and they can give me this feedback or they can say, come after class and they can go really in depth on it. Yeah. I think that's extremely, extremely valuable. Beneficial. Yeah. It's so beneficial because it's like sometimes now, like out of college, um, has anyone did everyone go to college here? Yeah. I went. Did you? I went. Okay. I feel like I feel like we've all kind of experienced that like those moments when it's just kind of like, you know, I have a question and I'm gonna go ask this person specifically. But then outside of college, it's like, dang, you know, I want to work on this project. Who do I talk to? And and that's the difference between for me being in college and out of college because it's so it's easier to have, like start those conversations in that environment yeah. than being outside of college. It's not the worst thing in the world, it's just different, like a different structure. And so that's why I'm like college brings and provides that structure of like community in a sense. Obviously the community you build while on campus, but also the connections. Like mm -hmm. and I think even going to community college is still beneficial as well as like a high top priority school where you have like, you know, Howard or like um Harvard, you know, like all the Ivy League schools like those name stamps, those are beneficial, but also like even if you can't afford it or you can't get in, like being still around the people that you wouldn't have bumped into on the street, that's still yeah. a resource. Really random question. Has anyone ever like just wanted to go into a college campus now and just sit? Oh, I do that a lot of tech. Okay. Yeah, I wanna do that. <laughs> like I went to <laughs> I went to Clark like recently because we were passing out stuff and I was like, oh this is so nice. And I really just like Oh, I miss the atmosphere of college. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not just me in my room, it's like oh, people, that's so nice, but also at the same time, like I wouldn't have to why I mean I could talk to them, but I wouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like wow. Yeah. I, but I also think it's kind of weird to just be on the campus and just be there. Okay, sorry. Oh, that was it can me. be. If you make it weird, yeah, if you make it weird. It's like it's like, like the older, the older you to hang out around. Hard. I think the older you are, the weirder it gets. Yeah, yeah, that part. The older you are, the okay, yeah, sadly, I don't have but, <laughs> but it's true. You know, attentions. You don't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you up? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Um, oh, me personally, I feel like I agree with uh, Mad. Um, <laughs> I agree with her as far as like being out on your own versus being like in any sort of community setting, or because. We are like social species at the end of the day, like just being around and being a, like a structured environment with other people who are also creative or blah, blah, blah. So it's great for networking, it's great for, and it's still learning at the end of the day. I think that where, based on what she was saying, like where you're asking is it worth it when we're talking about things like student loans and just how expensive it is. It, that's the part where people say that it's a quote unquote scam. Because, you know, in my opinion, I think, I personally think you could probably run your school without one student paying $100,000 yeah, to go there. You mm -hmm. know, especially when you're making millions of dollars on, especially the higher schools, they're making millions of dollars on sports, and then they don't give money to the players, and then you're, making millions and millions more on the students, whether it's they're getting scholarships, whether it's they're getting, uh, or people just paying out of pocket mm -hmm. or getting student loans. And then you end up going your whole entire life owing, still owing money some people, a lot of people actually. Yeah. And that's a sad existence where you get out of college because you went there so that you can make money and you come right out of college in the negatives. Yeah. And it's like, well, isn't it supposed to be helping me? The, the college itself, it could be great, but what I'm talking about, like, is it worth it? Or if you can afford it and it's no big deal, then yeah, it's, 
you would have a great time. Yeah. But I think that if you're going to come out of that situation, especially younger people who go and they don't know what they want to do. So you're going to a, a place that's costing people tens of thousands of dollars. If you want to stay on campus, it's way more money. I think that, and then also like the whole structure of society where certain jobs of course, there are jobs where you need to get hands-on experience at a facility, but there are, you know, as time goes on and on and on, uh, education becomes more and more accessible to regular people. When some of these colleges were around, some of these like super old colleges like Oxford been around since the 1800s, and we live in an era now where you can go and learn things, whether it's an online class or I think that will be fair is if society moves towards if you want to get in this career you have to take these classes to get in that career and you can get your certificate or whatever whatever instead of having to pay this full load of money to go to math class and go to science class and blah 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 blah, blah. you don't know what you want to do with your life you're in debt yeah. just so that you can go and be a trucker, you know what I mean? When you could have just got your certificate for knowing how to drive or whatever for that job. So I think it, it, if it was, you know, Certificates. if it was like a semi affordable option that people had, you have the option to go or not, I think it would be a way more better than the way that they kind of funnel you in there so many young kids don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they want. You're in year two, year three, still trying to figure out what you want to do. Why not, or, or I at least tell people, at least wait until, even if you have to take a break after high school and try to figure out what you want to be investing in, and not only your money, but also tons of your time. Then you go and you can do it in an affordable way where you're not in debt at the end. I think that's worth it, yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel a lot of different ways about it. Um, being from someone who went to a college and then someone who also didn't finish college and what my views are about it. I feel like it's definitely worth it in the sense for um, networking and community for sure. I think when I look back at things that I miss the most, it's that access to so many different people. Usually the bigger the college, more powerful people that come just to mingle with the students. You don't get that anywhere else outside of college. So that I think is something that you cannot put a price on, especially depending on where you're going to school. But I do feel like there should be you sh there should be more of a force to go to school if you specifically know what you want to do. And if you kind of had an idea of what you want to do in the job course aside from school. Mm -hmm. So for like example, when I first went to school, I a thousand percent wanted to be in the veterinary field. I didn't care what I was doing. As long as I was with some animals, that was it. And so I went to school for biology so I could pursue that. In the midst of not finishing school, I still was able, was able to go into the job field and kind of work into the veterinary field and realize well, I could be a vet assistant without any certifications mm -hmm. in Georgia. I did that for about five years. I realized I hated it and I never wanted to do that <laughs> And I'm very allergic to dogs. I'm actually allergic to a lot of animals, so I can't even wow. really do, wow. even if I wanted to go back to school to be a vet, it's not something that's in my diet. That would be crazy. And yeah, yeah, and it was something that I literally did not know was not a good fit for me until being in the workforce mm -hmm. for that field for so long. And so I really think like if somebody wants to be a lawyer, for example, I have a best friend named Nadine. She went to school to be uh, a lawyer. As soon as she graduated, she did her paralegal internship. She hated it and she's changing her major. And so I was just thinking, I was having a conversation with her, like, I wish you could have interned with him yeah. before you started the program, because yeah. now you $100,000, you worked mm -hmm. all the best schools, mm -hmm. now you're hundred thousand dollars in debt. And so it's just kind of like, and then she's changing what she wants to do. And so I do feel like if you know what you want to do, and it's like STEM, a nurse, a plumber, something very specific, go to school. 
but also I think there just should be even like workshops, especially like in high schools and stuff, where yeah, kids yeah. can really like feel what they want to do. Because not everything that you want to do may not be that route that you have to take school to get to it. For example, I work in IT. I did not have to go to school to do IT. I mean, I had to get certifications and things like that. But if I knew when I was 19 that I could make six figures at 25 without going to college to go into IT, that would have changed my trajectory completely. But that just kind of comes with working in the in the field, out here in the blood, in the streets, y'all. You gotta like when you are here, you can really see like like with film. If you work with film, I think people if they really worked and kind of worked under someone who was in film, I know a lot of people who dream about it but don't really know the hard work that goes into it, and it looks a lot more glamorous. Yeah, it looks way more glamorous than it really, really is. And yeah. so I think like it very much is a <laughs> useful investment. I'll never not college and what it offered me, especially for someone who wants to go back. But I do think that there should be more of a push in getting people into the field physically to see if that's what they want to invest in because Showing people a pretty picture of what a career could be and you've never worked it, but you have to work your ass off and pay $100,000 to do it in six years from now, that's a lot. Yeah. At least to me, like especially like with nursing, a lot of people who want to go into nursing because their parents are nurses, they see all of the TikToks of the nurses out traveling beautiful places, yeah. and they realize they hate bedside, they can't actually take care of care of people yeah. but it pays their bills they made their parents happy they went to college but you know it's just such an investment to not know yeah. what your passion is yeah. so that's probably yeah. my only and then like once once like a lot of people feel that pressure of like for example your friend who was trying to be a lawyer a lot of people feel uh the pressure of like in my phone oh yeah. no sorry i'm so sorry you good, you good. Okay. You're good. Um, no, a lot of people feel the pressure of like, well, I spent all this time and money, so I, and, and this is what my whole family knows I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I need to stay in this field even if I don't like it. So it almost like, for a lot of people, it restricts them as just a human being of like what they want to do, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy. <laughs> exactly. And, and like when you were talking about the film thing, I, I, I know a lot of people that either like go to school for film or acting or whatever and they ask me about it or they're thinking about it and I tell them like just don't do it bro <laughs> like it's not gonna do anything for you they're not gonna hire you because you got a degree in film like they're gonna hire you because they're gonna look at your resume or your reel or what you actually did in real life not they don't care if you got a degree in acting bro like it's not gonna get you booked you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it definitely depends on what you're doing, of course, like the career that you really know you want. But I do agree, even people, careers that people think they want to go to college for, they really don't know what it's like. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's a risk. You know, it's like a huge, and like you said, it's an investment. So you might not get that money back. And so if you're going to take that huge of a risk, hundreds of thousands or less, or just tens of thousands, like maybe just be more... Everybody can do what they want, but in my opinion, you should be more like, like careful with not just so free flowing. Like, I'm gonna go to college and just figure out what I want to do and find myself. Yeah. I think if the more social of a person you are, it just in general, it's easier if you don't go to college. If you're way more social, that's true. You know, if you're kind of like you're not gonna yeah. be going outside a lot unless you have to. Yeah. Then it's gonna be a lot harder for you without going, being in that environment already, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like my first two years at college, I, you know, I have my friends, I was like, I'm gonna go back to my room. And then <laughs> like my junior year, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go outside. Like I would join clubs and stuff, but then like the people want to do stuff outside the clubs, like, that's nice, that is, but no. But then I started realizing like, okay, it's good to get out of your room and yeah. be more social, but like it took me a while to get there. So, and I'll definitely say like, if I was at home, mm -hmm. it would have been a wrap. I'd probably like, ah! Even if you said like, 
they ask you about 10 events and you only say yes to two. Yeah. If you didn't have those same people telling you, you would have went to zero instead of two. No, so, precisely. Like, like, and yeah. even stuff that was happening on campus, I never knew about anything unless someone told me. Because I just wasn't. Like, I wasn't aware. I wasn't looking at the pages and things happening. Like, if someone didn't say, oh, are you going to this event? I'd be like, oh, I had no idea that was happening. And I'm actually interested in whatever That's this it. is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely have, meeting those people that can, like, talk to you about the things that are going on. I think that's really, like, crucial. And, like, you usually don't get that unless you get out and you just have to meet people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, I did want to say, like, to your point, Taylor, I think, like, what you were just saying about kind of work studies or getting in the field, mm-hmm. I feel like we should bring back apprenticeships, like, in in a more mainstream type of way versus, mm-hmm. like, every now and then, oh, I might do an apprenticeship or you might do an internship, but actually having that as kind of a a funnel program in a lot of fields, I think that's really important. And I'm just thinking back in the day of whatever time period it was, how that was how you got into your field. You were an apprentice, you you lived in the workshop or whatever, and you were there like day and night on call to get into that field and see how it was. I think that's so important because my high school is a work study high school. And so we had to do like, corporate internships for the most part. Wow. And but that told me that when I went to college, I did not want to go to the open field. So that helped me tremendously. I'm, I'm not gonna say waste my time. It would've been a waste of time. It would've been very, like everything I've done is extremely valuable in my life. I've learned a lot. But I didn't pursue getting other internships at corporate companies because I knew that's not what I wanted to go into. Mm-hmm. And so it, it freed up more time for me to study different fields or learn about different things in order for me to get to where I am now and to some degree at least. Yeah. Can I piggyback? Mm-hmm. One, I like to say, that is so awesome that your school had that. We didn't have anything close to that, but we did have some programs you could kind of be in, like you want to be a nurse, you could take a pre-nursing class or something mm-hmm. that wouldn't go towards your college credits, unfortunately, but you could get a feel for what you wanted yeah. to do. That was like the closest that we had, but when you said that, it kind of made me think like, I think it would be more of an appreciated investment if the societal push wasn't as bad. If people wanted to do it because they wanted to do it, not so, versus why don't I want to just not have a degree, or why won't I be able to get a job if I don't have a degree, or well, I'm the first generation college student in my family. I have to go to school. I have to finish school or I have to do this. You know, it's after high school. Many families will not let you stay at home. And a lot of the families are not cool with you being like, oh, I'm going to just wait, figure it out. You know, it's like, oh, I still got bills. And, you know, are you going to school or are you getting a job? It's like kind of like boom, boom. But one of them I feel like kind of has like more of a derogatory stance. Like, oh, you're not going to school? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I really thought better of you. But like yeah. honestly, like if it was viewed more so of like, no, I'm not going, it's not that I'm not going to school, but like just encouraging kids to just be in the field a little bit to see what they're dealing with. Yeah. Like bringing back nursing again, like if I do, so I work with healthcare IT, so I support nurses on their floor. Mm-hmm. I did not know until I shared a 13 hour shift with an ICU nurse that I did not want to be. <laughs> a bedside nurse at least. But it's very rare that anybody will get to kind of shadow a nurse for 13 hours in that type of field, you yeah. know? And so it's just, if, they, if we had ways to kind of one, just not make people feel so bad about not finishing, but making it more so about like, hey, did you, is this what you want to do? And helping them kind of see what that looks like so yeah. they can get the support. Because once they know it's what they want to do, like, yeah. hey, I worked a full week with these ICU nurses. I had a, it was great. It's something I could do. I realistically saw them doing it. I saw how the work balance life is. Some people can't work 60 hours a week. That's not, I mean, not every job requires that to make good money. But I think, you know, if the more of the focus was like, yeah, I got to experience it. This is what I do. When they do go to school, it's not, it's, you know, you know what you're doing. You, you know, you're more 
focused and also you know what it's like to be a little broke because <laughs> you experienced life without school so it's just kind of like okay no nah, i know that the grass is not that much green yeah. yeah there's jobs available but they're not doing what i want them to do and uh, you know you have more of an idea so yeah, yeah. it's true people forget you can go at any time any time yeah it's not like a race you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so experience in life, figure out what you want to do, and then go. As long as you have the support behind it. If you're in a family where they're going to like, well, you're still going to be sleeping un- under a bridge, then if you don't go, it's like, okay, okay bet. <laughs> you know, but a lot of people like go through that where their parents are like, nah, like, especially in our community or like my, my, a lot of my African friends who someone decided not to finish it or whatever, it was like this existential Same. decision that's going to ruin their life and their family's going to hate them forever or whatever. Like, I think that the whole mindset within the community too and the social pressure behind it is toxic. Straight up, like, I really do, you know. So yeah, I, know, I would love to hear your opinion because... <laughs> <laughs> um. I feel like, like you guys said in the beginning, it is one of the with the networking and stuff like that, and it does open doors to many opportunities because you meet new people. And is it worth student loans? Hell no. I'm actually a nurse. So, okay. yeah, no, it's not worth student loans. I was a chamberlain, so now I'm in, I have student loans that I have to pay for the rest of my life, and it's like, time is divided. <laughs> He's not paying it. And it's like, You're okay, right. well, I went to school, I'm helping people. You should be able to pay that much. There's countries that yeah. you don't have to pay for your education. It's, it's free. Yeah. But yeah, that's my opinion. He, I thought he, he is paying a portion of government employees. Oh, government employees. Government employees. Oh. <laughs> 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 I know, that's it. Yeah. Like everybody in healthcare. Yeah. 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 You guys are literally yeah. like servants. Yeah. Like yeah. like yeah. 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 Literally, like. Oh, he didn't say government officials when he was trying no, to No, but this is she's a teacher and she's like, um, she said um, she got a portion of hers covered by the government. Why do you want a portion of mine? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you guys are literally servant leaders like, to yeah. the world. You yeah, know? you would hate for like you to get pushed through the college system. Like you go to school, all these teachers are telling you you need to go to college. When you go to college, now you're thousands of dollars in debt, and you're a teacher, not getting paid enough. That's Teach nice. pushing more students while you're in debt, mm-hmm. pushing more students into the same funnel that you're in. It's like unrealistic. Yeah. Very unrealistic. Yeah. I, I do appreciate um, college, like the high school college transition for myself because um, I was in STEM with Skyler, and my pathway was health initially, and so I started my first year off with bio because I wanted to study um, medicine to then be a surgeon, a trauma surgeon later down the road. And that first year showed me the people that I'd be working with, personality types, and obviously, you know, people change over time, but it showed me the, the personalities. and. Um, then it showed me the type of professors I'd be dealing with and their beliefs and how like that's pushed in certain settings. And it just, I'm like, I, it's not that I didn't like the field, but I, I don't think I liked, like, I wouldn't, you know, like, um, cause we're talking about network and community, right? Yeah. I am grateful I didn't choose that field and graduate with the people at my school. Yeah. If I want to do that, it has to be in a whole different setting with a whole different community of people behind me. Mm-hmm. Because it just wasn't giving like what I needed to give. And I'm just like, Ugh, yeah, I'm not doing this with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. And, yeah. then, and so then I transitioned to, and then obviously it was other opinions, um, like me being in school for a set amount of years during my 20s. And then studying this, and then still in my late 20s, and then I'm still studying this, and I'm still like working under certain people. And then in my 30s, then I'm probably maybe just starting my career, maybe, yeah. but like to where I'm like, 
happy about it, yeah. but then it's like, what happens to my twenties? Like, and I start thinking about that as well. And so that first year kind of set the tone of like, you know, I it's not that I don't like this pathway. I just think it deserves a different age for myself. So mm -hmm. I transitioned to business because I'm like, I like the two. I like traveling. So what can I do? Whereas like right now in my twenties, what do I, I appreciate traveling the most? I appreciate business and corporate finance and this that third. So I was like, okay, let me do that now because I'm not gonna spend all my twenties studying this thing with people I don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be in a setting where it's like I can learn about those cultures, those languages, things on my bucket list, mm -hmm. and then when I have the money, I don't even have to be stuck with the loans. Like you know, just thinking about that, like, and so that really affected the way I thought too. So I'm I'm grateful for the high school college transition because I didn't really experience the um the internships or the apprenticeship. But I experienced the people I would most likely be working with, at least one or two. You know what I'm saying? And that that was like, yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> Y'all got this. Yeah. Um, and they still like, still some of them were like, like even after I switched, they'd be like, oh, Aaron, do you want to study with us? Because they didn't know I switched over. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, okay, no thanks. Um, it was it was very interesting though, but that was. That was good for me. Um, so I'm pretty, you know, like people change their majors all the time in college. Yeah. So that was like one of my stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I went in like with business management, but like something I found about me just going through schooling in general is that I like small schools, so, like, small <laughs> communities. Like we can see each other, and you'll know my name, or you'll you'll know my face. Like it'll be recognizable. Yeah. And so I really appreciated that. Like when I was thinking about changing my major. My teacher's like, oh, that major would be in the school of engineering. And I was like, but no, I'm not leaving. So I'm going to stay right here with all these people that I've built these relationships with. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate that, like learning that about myself. Um, and and also just, you know, just like you were saying, how people are like, oh, you want to come study with us? Like just getting that camaraderie with people in your space. And even if you don't know their names, like yeah. you see them enough. And you and one day you'd be like, oh, hey, I see you in my class. Yeah. You want to hang out or, or you want to study with me or ask someone a question? Literally, that's how me and her met because I keep seeing her in my class. Okay, Skylar's topic's next. Um, my topic was from health and wellness. Oh, um, yeah, it's pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, how does social media affect mental health? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good word. I chose that one because. Um, a lot of people compare themselves to other people in their age group, like, um, yeah, that's one. That's one that I was like, yeah, that's my right. topic. Um, you wrote that? Yeah. Look at you doing big things. No, um, how does health, or you said how does health affect? So, social media affect mental health. Yeah. yeah. We kind of talked about it low key too. Yeah. But, you know. It affects it. A lot. It affects it. Because <laughs> okay. um, we, like, we see on the day to day, like, how our, like, scrolling on our phones, there's topics about, like, depression. You know, this is how you get, like, this is how um, you're supposed to handle if you have, to, like, depression, like, how you're supposed to go about your day, or, like, you know, a motivational word, and you're, you're listening to this motivational word, but your headspace is, like, clouded with all this judgment. And like negativity and this, that, and the third, but they're like, do your best, get up, make your bed, open the windows, yeah, eat yeah. breakfast, kill it at people. It's like, <laughs> and it's like, oh my goodness. And then the one I sent data was just like, don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're finished. And it's like, <laughs> like yo, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I feel it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, for some people, it's like, that's exactly what I need to hear. And then for some yeah. other people, it's like, bro, like, why are you targeting me? Like, and and like that's just like one of the many ways like social media has a negative impact on on health and mental health specifically because it's like it's not catered for everyone. Yeah, um, yeah, it's not specific. Yeah, it's, it's very general for for algorithms and for posting and. For social media, like gurus, like it's very general, just for the likes and the, the sounds, the popular sounds on there. Yeah. But it's not personalized, and um, that that just kind of makes me—I don't know if anyone wants to say anything—but kind of made me segue into like 
online therapy. So, <laughs> wait, I want to touch on something yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Like, something I've been realizing, I think, it's social media can be like, it can be a good, and if it's in a coincide with a person you have like in your physical life. Because when I've been talking to people about different thoughts or different like ideas that I've been having, and then something on social media that kind of either backs up what they've been saying or shows me like a different light and provides more insight, then it's, oh yeah, okay, this is nice and it's reassuring. But when it is social media as an only outlet, as an only, this is where I get all of my information from, I do think that's when it becomes very negative or where it can become negative because as Aaron was saying, it's not specific to me in my situation. There's so many factors that go into how someone is thinking about something or how someone is feeling. But if social media is just saying, oh, you'll get over it. There's a rainbow on the other side. But there's like something I have to work through to even, but I don't know I have to work through this. Yeah. And I'm just looking, where's the rainbow at? Mm -hmm. and, it, and then it can make you feel a little like, oh, I'm broken. I can't find a rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. So. I do think you need a person that you can directly talk to, and then maybe social media can be like the, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but. Yeah. Uh, aside, aside. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, aside piece, not aside yeah. piece. <laughs> aside. <laughs> so much, yeah. yeah. Aside dish. Yeah. yeah. I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like, before, like, when we was growing up, social media was like, like I remember, like, in, like even way back in middle school, and everybody was like on Facebook back then, and it would just be the people you know, people from your school, your family. It was super kind of personal, mm -hmm. you know. And then other than that, it was like funny videos, memes, cats, Fine. like <laughs> yeah, like little quotes. Uh, share this if you love your mom or else. Yeah. And I, I gotta share this. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like a completely different like thing. But now fast forward through a whole bunch of years and a bunch of BS. Not even a whole bunch. That's a crazy thing. Not really, yeah. Like maybe just like Not ten years or so. Five more like it. I don't know. I feel like it's really like from twenty sixteen and ahead. Okay. Social media and the internet's really turned into rage baiting. Mm -hmm. Like getting clicks, dealing with the algorithm. There people realize I can actually get more clicks by making people mad than anything else. That's crazy. Like you can post used to be cute cats will get millions of views, funny stuff will get millions of views. Now people are interacting more with Controversial takes, yeah. political, like extremism, getting people fired, right? Canceling people, mm -hmm. like gender, da, da, things that are not how it used to be. It, yeah. It's about I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get all these people mad. Mm -hmm. And you go through your timeline, whether it's TikTok, whether it's like I'm on X uh, a lot, Instagram, Twitter. Twitter, whatever you want to call it, I'm just trying to be correct with it. Yeah, with the time, but with the time. You go through your timeline and all you see is things that are trying to get you upset. And it's gotten to the point where people are, they know it so well that they do it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And pe people are making skits where it's like, they'll make a, a fake skit where it's like, oh, she told him to pay for all her homegirls and he, this is how oh, he reacts. Okay, wait, then you watch it and you're like, if you're a guy, you're like, these girls, they don't blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You get mad if you're a girl, oh my God, blah, blah. And now like, the, you got this gender war, you got every yeah. kind of war yeah. that's like going on yeah. between extremists. And the more you're on there, the more you get sucked into one side or another. And once that happens, it starts bleeding into your real life. Exactly. Then you start looking at the people around you and putting these same thoughts and opinions. Or you could just be so on edge because you haven't seen a hundred different opinions yeah. 
that are against yours, that are making all these bad arguments. And then when you hear somebody talk in real life, you're like on edge, like, oh, they said this, oh, they must be one of them kind of people. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like affecting your mental health and affecting the way people think, I've seen, I'm sure we've all seen or know a person that you can tell was, became an extremist through, through the internet or through social media or through watching the news all the time. Yeah. And it consumes their entire life to the point where it's like, they're not even the same person that they used to be before all this stuff, you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you just keep people that's on there all day long, every day, it's gonna affect you. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just is like, and then I don't know what the, the solution to that is because social media and just people's phones, that is like a religion in a way. Like, people probably are on their phones more than they pray. That's true. Like, or definitely are. People are on their phones more than they with their family. People are on their phones more than they probably with their kids. Like, your phone is like, Right it, it's like an overlord in this world. Like I really do be thinking like that. Like you can see the concert, a concert nowadays, everybody's like this. Uh, function, everybody's on their phone at a function, at a party, at a get together, at a networking event. Everyone's on their phone constantly, twenty four seven. It literally like when you like put your phone down and like look around in the world, it's like, bruh, we really are some zombies. Like Apple. They control the world, for real. They really do control all of us because we're all on our phone all the time. Like, we need it. I need my phone to get here today. <laughs> like, yeah, no so yeah. Netflix, we're not printing that there. Yeah, nobody know how to read a map. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would do without GPS. I want to do a road trip with no GPS. Like, just a map and, like, cross from east to, east to west coast. That's oh, good. Not safe enough to do all of that. Right. I didn't even Where are you going? Where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Trump. Uh, the South. I you know, know where you at, boy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I think we're on. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. You can do it. I fully support. Yeah, it is. I hope you have to turn your location though. Right? <laughs> yeah, turn your location. Oh no, I'm not going to call me, but I'll oh, have to have that giant map. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, get lost with me, like Taisha. Did y'all see the goofy movie? The goofy movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, got the big old no, that's just, anytime I see a map in a movie, it's stressing me out. I'm like, no. Okay, it seems like it always comes like, to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, okay. But my my um, I want to return the question in the sense of how do y'all feel about I'm not gonna say they're overshared, but it's, it appears as though they might be trying to be too negative. They're showing you like almost every single thing. But I think it seems they're like wrong. they're. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> saying like, how do you feel? Is that, do you think that social media is creating more of those people? Like, people are like, oh, I have to put out stuff like this. Yes. Are you ready to answer? Yes, because okay. I, I think I had your question now mm -hmm. because. Honestly, the first thing that kind of came to mind with social media is I feel like there's been a culture of relatable or relatability that's almost been creating like this high of my mentality. And I get this mostly from being like an active Twitter user because overall, I feel like people post their opinions nonstop, 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 what they're doing, and everybody's like agreeing. For the most part, like I'm oh, yeah, saying, but the moment somebody does not agree with whatever their opinion is or however they feel, there's like extreme shame. Like if anyone disagrees with you online, it's almost for like the end of the world for some people because mm -hmm. like on Twitter, if you say something that somebody disagrees with, it can be like a oh, thousand times bombarding you. Like you really feel like males are the best animal, that's so crazy. You have no idea. Like, it's so intense, and it can be as small as something like that, or as yeah. big as a real, like, political conversation. Yeah. And so I feel like some people can even have a non-relatable kind of thing to say, mm -hmm. and they'll be kind of hesitant, and I'm going to be like the kind of feel, like, well, I'm going to wait for somebody else to run down this road. No, yeah. and I'll just like nobody it. else I'll just like feels that tweet. way. 
Like, yeah, because when you, and then with the cancel culture that comes around and stuff, you don't know if, if you don't agree with someone else or you're not relatable, you're just kind of like, all right, don't hate me when I say this. Because if you notice in like the past five to six years, people are very adamant about adding disclaimers to all of their opinions yes. on YouTube, TikTok. Yes. They said, this is how I feel. But before you attack me, before you, like, you know, I just have to let you know. And they have to boom, 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 all the reasons why they're not trying to offend you or they don't want to be canceled. So I feel like that's kind of like similar to your question, at least, of why it may be promoting people to just be this all around person that everyone can kind of get along with or that everybody can be cool with. But it has some people, I feel like, losing their individuality because. You know, hey, who else is running down this highway backwards? Because, you know, I'm going to look crazy. Yeah. But yeah. really, people should just walk in their truth. Like you said, you may post about how tired you are about something, somebody's going to, you know, yeah. they agree. But yeah. people be scared, and rightfully so. Because the hate is crazy. The internet I, I didn't post it, I didn't say something on Twitter about some sports and have somebody go to my page and be like, you sick. You're not, your movies are trash. You're never going to be this and that. Like, you suck. Look at you like, like, oh, like, 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 <laughs> What? Like, they'll go Same. as far as to Google you just to trash everything you've done in life just because. They know my dad would pop in. And, like, you can, if you're, like, all self aware, be like, these are bots or these are just people who just like to be like this. If you take, like, that stuff personal, yeah. or especially, like, if you get ratioed or something, like, somebody, mm -hmm. like, somebody just, like, calls you something crazy, like, I don't know, this is giving me weirdo pedo vibes, or something crazy because you talk about, oh, I like this sports player, yeah. and then, like, that gets 100,000, or, or that gets, like, whatever, and you're like, oh, wait, I'm getting destroyed now, <laughs> and now you don't want to say anything else ever again because... People just go super crazy, but you have to be, you really do have to be so self-aware to know, like, that stuff is not anything that needs to, like, you need to worry about. It's not constructive criticism. It's not anything, like, even for me, that, like, I do music. So, like, you post, if you're going to post music, you're going to get people that's automatically going to call you trash. It don't matter what it is, like, what the song is or whatever, like, people, you're gonna have like a group of people that's like, yo, this is trash. And it's like, are you gonna really gonna like let that affect how you move or what you decide to post or not post? I have to remind myself all the time, like you did not come on this platform to agree with everybody. It's okay. Yeah, not everybody's gonna Yeah, it's okay. I I have to tell myself all the time, you are not for everybody. Like as a mantra when I'm on social media because it kind of makes you feel like you are supposed to be related to everybody. We're all supposed to be on the same page. We're all supposed to have the same interests. We're all supposed no. to hate and not like the same things because the person who did feel the way that I did, they got shamed for it. So I was just, no, no, that's fine. I'm not for everybody. You're not for everybody. It's okay if people don't like what you have to say. If you get shamed, you know, hopefully you don't have to do with nothing too crazy. But you know, if you get shamed, it's okay. Like, really, it's okay. And I think, whew, even with the monetization of Instagram and stuff like that, it's like people are getting paid to make them seem like we're all on the same page. It's like, no, they're getting paid to make you feel like we're supposed to think this way. So you gotta take it. Yeah, so that's, that's really like and that even changes even more. Like people are getting paid to just post things that like it's just like it's crazy. Yeah, and you were like and you don't even realize the person behind this post is literally just posting this because they get paid to get engagement and that's the only reason. It's not even their real opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you really start looking at everything you see different, like, oh, this is you should look at it for what it is. It's just entertainment. It's, now, if you trust somebody, you follow them, you trust, their, like they give great info, they give motivational speaking or whatever, that's different. Yeah. You know, but when you just like scroll the timeline and you follow the like shade room of just a little boy or something, well, that's it's, 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 and yeah, to unfollow. it's gonna be toxic, yeah. you know. <laughs> I was shook when I learned it was ran by TV Jakes. The shade room? 
What? Are you sure about that? I promise to God. <laughs> He's like, it's crazy. <laughs> like, people who own it and run the place. That was that's like the crazy thing. That's, that's, that's I found out a couple years ago. Wait, no. You just never know. <laughs> it's it too much on your mental health after a while. Like, there needs to be like social media therapists. I take social media breaks. Right? That's what I do. I'm you do? Step away. Yeah. Yeah. For how long? Like, what are your breaks? Like, whatever I feel like it and how ever long. There's no like time when you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to stay off the three minutes. It's whenever I feel like I want to come back. Mm-hmm. That's necessary. You ever feel like you out the loop when you do it? I feel like when I get off social media, yeah. I'm mean, missing out on like world news. <laughs> all of my stuff is tired about it. You hear about it. Yeah. It's just like. Because everyone yeah. else is on it. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard yeah. when you like love sports so much and you want to keep up with what's going on in sports. You feel like, I'm just going to go in here and check the game. And you get on there and it's, you see something that just makes you so mad. Like. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm going over here just to check the game, and then it just sucks you into uh, this negativity, and it's just the swipe bad. <laughs> the swipe yeah. Uh, and that's a wrap on part one of our Let's Talk journey. Thank you for joining us, but believe us, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've had over three hours of rich, insightful, and heartwarming conversation, and there's so much more to share. Stay tuned for part two, where we dive even deeper. Curious about the full unedited experience? We've got you covered. Let us know in the comments and we'll figure out how to get it to you. And if you're in Atlanta and you're itching to join these bi-weekly chats in person, or you have a topic close to your heart that you'd like for us to explore, we'd love to hear from you. Send us your ideas and who knows, you might be the voice sparking our next big conversation. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk. Until next time, keep connecting, keep growing, and keep the conversations alive. See you soon.